Hello, welcome to Literary Life, and welcome to this video, which is a book review of Bright Young Woman. This is a thriller by Jessica Knoll that came out last month in September. My book reviews are spoiler free. I will have links below if you're interested in picking up this book, or this book will be listed in my Pango shop, so I will have that book below or link below for the book. My books reviews, I give every book one to five stars. One star, I did not like the book. Two stars, eh, it was an okay read. Three stars, it was a good book, and I'm going to recommend it to some people. I liked it. Four stars, I loved it. It was a great book. And then I give five stars to these more random books that just absolutely blow my mind. So let's start talking about this one here. So in this book, we're going to really jump between two key points in time. The modern time, which is around, I think, 2021. And then we're going to be jumping back to a span of years throughout the 70s. So starting with the 70s, we're going to basically be at a Florida college campus. And we're really going to hone in on a sorority house. And the sorority present, president, whose name is Pamela, Pamela is one of those people that really kind of has a sense of order about things. She takes her responsibilities very seriously. And on one particular night, she chooses to stay in instead of going to a party and is doing her homework, focusing on her studies. Her best friend does go out that night and is a part of her sorority house. Her best friend arrives home and in the middle of the night, Pamela gets up. And during the course of that moment, she's going to make a couple of quick decisions as she moves through the home that is going to essentially save her life um, because there is a person in the home who has attacked and injured and murdered a handful of the girls. Again, spoiler free, so I'm not going to give any additional details. But Pamela is essentially through that chain of events going to become a key witness to the prosecution, the identification in the later prosecution of this person. Now, what's going to be really well developed and fun through this story are two components. One is the time, the political and kind of social setting that this is occurring in. We're at a sorority house. We have a group of female college students so what the author really integrates is some of the gender stereotypes that very much existed at that time and how they will impact the law, law enforcement's perceptions and behavior, the court system's process and behavior, as well as the public's view of the women that are part of that sorority. And I'm talking about things like, you know, if a woman is dating or she's going out, she essentially set herself up to become a victim. Those kind of um, perceptions and beliefs that are going to come to play. So it is really fun as you're going through the reading to kind of see how that social context is woven into this fiction story. The other part I really enjoyed is the author is going to highlight how corruption, people's personal agendas, can impact a series of significant events like that. We are going to meet law enforcement, not just in Florida, but in two other states. And here is why. In those states, I think were Utah, if I remember correctly, or Colorado and Seattle. Now, the reason is because a couple of years before the event at the sorority house, we're going to have a serial killer who is active in Seattle, attacking young women, late teens, early 20s. And one of those women is named Ruth, and she is going to go missing suddenly um, in the presence of thousands of people in the middle of the day at a very popular beach lake. And her best friend is named Tina, and Tina is going to essentially never let go of the fact that Ruth's crime, her disappearance, has not been solved. And because Ruth's body is not recovered. And Tina is believes that Ruth became a victim of the serial killer who was had also attacked another female that same day and whose body was recovered. Um, so Tina is going to really go on her own mission to figure out what happened to Ruth. And a few years later, when she hears about the attacks in Florida, 
The MO is going to match the serial killer that was active in the Northwest. She is going to travel to Florida, and she is therefore going to cross paths with Pamela, our sorority president. And through their relationship, it's going to continue over the next several years. But definitely, she's going to play an integral role in those first couple of um, months, as well as maybe the first year and a half while the investigation is continuing um, as I noted before, we're going to get a little bit of exposure to law enforcement in Seattle and a couple other states. And it's through these moments that we're going to learn about how did a serial killer who was active in the Northwest even make it into the Southeast and was able to commit the crimes that occurred in Pamela's sorority house. Um, this book for me was a solid four-star read. I absolutely loved it, like I noted. I thought it was fun how it really pulled through these historical and social elements. I thought she did a great job, the author, of pulling in, you know, how that corruption, people's personal agendas can impact a chain of events. Um, so I just think it was a smart and entertaining read. And I think this is, if you didn't already grab this one, this is a great, like if you're looking for the thrillers around Halloween, I would definitely grab this read. Um, I think it is, like I said, a perfect one for the season. So that is it. If you've read this book as well, let me know below your thoughts. Look for it in my Pango shop if you're interested or just grab a new copy or get a copy from your library, but fun read for Halloween. All right, let's go read some more books. Happy reading.